Brigham City was the site of a massive military hospital during World War II. And most of it is gone or repurposed, but there's one weird piece that's left, and we're going to go find it. Come on. Brigham City was pretty tiny in 1941. It had less than 6,000 people, but it was growing fast. 6,000 was a 10% increase over 10 years before, and in the 1950 census, it had gone up another 20%. So it was growing really fast even before the Bushnell Hospital showed up. But even with all that growth, it was a pretty quiet town, and today it's still pretty quiet. Brigham City was announced as a possible site out of three other places for a possible military hospital to serve the Western United States during World War II. And in 1941, after that final decision was announced, uh, construction began very quickly. It only took them 10 months to build the entire hospital. In October of 1942, about 10 months after they announced the hospital in Brigham City, it had 60 buildings. Most of them are gone now. A couple are left and have been remodeled, uh, but most traces of this hospital are gone, except for this one weird thing that's left. So the hospital initially began as a neurosurgical and neuropsychological center, uh, but it quickly also became a center for amputations and penicillin experiments and other medical treatments of that nature. In fact, there was one guy who described having an experimental operation done there. Uh, he had been hit with shrapnel and evacuated from Asia during World War II, and they thought that he would have to have his arm amputated uh, but they were actually able to go in and save his arm. So they sewed uh, his veins and his arteries together and uh, treated him, and he was able to keep his arm, which was pretty amazing. It's the surgeon who saves a man's life. It's the nurse whose tender care helps him to live. Bushnell was staffed by army personnel and medics, as well as local Brigham City residents who served as nurses and office staff. Uh, one lady described working there and helping people uh, with amputations because she had experience uh, with her father losing a hand and still living a fulfilling life. It was a pretty boring existence, though. Uh, the soldiers found ways to pass the time, but of course, with the trauma of being in combat and being injured and being in the hospital. Uh, it, it was just ways to pass the time. The army nurses were actually part of the military. And this was a time when women could not serve in combat roles, uh, but these women were recruited and went through a shorter version of the basic training of other soldiers and you know, ultimately got their nurse training as well and ended up serving in the actual army. So as rough as life was at Bushnell, the staff made a concerted effort to keep people's spirits up. There were quarters there where people could come visit. So people got to see their uh, parents, and their wives and their children, which really helped. Uh, there were also bus rides and bus tours around to see the sights of Utah. Uh, they had lots of outings, lots of fun things like that. Even some well-known people passed through, like Bob Hope and future President Harry Truman, uh, all came through Bushnell to raise the spirits of the soldiers. There were some lighthearted things as well, like the amputee band that went around playing music in local establishments. Most signs of this hospital are gone. However, there's this one 
weird thing left. And 13,000 people passed by this one weird relic that's still standing. This is what we came here to see. These are two chunks of concrete with lamps on top where the entrance gates to the hospital complex were. I have to wonder if people who see them even know what they are without stopping to read the sign. But I also think it's a super cool thing to save and to preserve. I love the art deco styling of these concrete behemoths uh, the big vertical indentations and the uh, different steps up and the layers and just the overall style of this sign is really, really cool. I have questions though, like whose idea was it to leave these two sections of the front gate behind? When the complex was repurposed, the gate was still in place with new signage, but that was before they started tearing down the buildings. The Intermountain Indian School closed 40 years ago, leaving most of the buildings to crumble. But as fences were torn down and neighborhoods popped up, someone decided not to tear this gate down. I saw a few people walking by, and several people drove by, without giving it a second thought. But it makes me wonder, what did people think seeing this gate? I guess many of them were in ambulances or sedated for their trip, but there had to be a lot who were alert and upright passing through. And of course those patients well enough to go on sightseeing bus trips would have been able to see them. The military isn't known for having aesthetically pleasing architecture. Bushnell Hospital's entire complex definitely looked like a military post with imposing, industrial-looking buildings that all looked the same as the one next to it. They were built for function, not for anyone to necessarily enjoy looking at. Which leaves another question. Why such a fancy gate for such a utilitarian place? Why not have just a couple of reinforced fence posts to support the gate itself with a sign out front? These are the bits of history that I love to discover. Lots of people are interested in studying World War II. They'll debate the ethics and morals of various big events like the nuclear bomb and Nazi concentration camps. But I'm interested in the little things like this, the little relics in your hometown. And if you're interested in this, subscribe for more. I'm Carl DeHuman.